Well, there was a time when it was possible to talk about equal rights for these groups, civil rights movement, the women's movement, gay rights movement, without using the word identity at all. You talked about social justice. Then something happened. The word identity, the concept of identity, entered the American language, and politics was no longer a question of being committed to a cause affecting people out there, but became a species of self-expression. I am expressing my identity by getting involved in this issue or that issue. And I'm focused on politics only because of my identity. And the point of that is I need to speak truth to power. I need to call people out. I've got to fight the power. When in fact, the point of politics is to be the power. Identity movements have put themselves into a state of, at the moment, a kind of frenzy that defeats this very practical purpose. And two things happen, and, I'll, and then I'll be done. One is that um, a rhetoric, a radical rhetoric gets employed that gets in people's faces in a way that is not helpful. Uh, Black Lives Matter, which laid out a, con a, consci a call to the conscience of anyone with a conscience in this country, ended up breaking up meetings with Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders. Suicide. But the other point, and this is where we come to free speech, is that if your politics are wrapped up with your definition of yourself, it gets very hard to have a political discussion because people feel that in disagreeing with their opinion, that you're challenging their identity. And that's what's happened on our campuses. We're no longer detached enough to argue without feeling that it's about us. And the big lesson we have to learn, it's not about us. It's not about how we define ourselves. It's not about intersectionality. It's not about my sensitivities. It's about fighting for justice out there for other people. And to do that, you need to retool. Thank you very much, Mark.